Range Rover Sport, driven to another level. Colorado's starting lineup features five returners. Colorado, Purdue, and Stanford, the only teams in power conferences across the country that don't have a transfer on the roster. Neat Clifford will be starting for the third time in place of Elijah Parquet, though Parquet is available to play tonight. Meanwhile, for the Oregon Ducks, they have three key transfers in the starting lineup in Davion Harmon, Jacob Young, and Quincy Carrier, we've already heard about Richardson and Dante. Those five have settled into the starting lineup with Eric Williams Jr., the first one off the bench. Buffaloes are at four and four. Over the weekend, dropped a pair of close wins to USC and UCLA. Three-point loss to USC. They missed a lot of shots in the interior, and then they trailed UCLA by 17, cut it to one, ended up losing by six. Here's Gary A, the transfer from Syracuse against Jabari Walker. And now Harmon going to work against Keyshawn Bartholomew. Now he comes out to hedge the screen. Richardson on the drive with five to shoot. Back now to Davion Harmon. Harmon long three and got it. Who was the first guy out on the court today, PJ? For the shoot-around and pregame, it was Davion Harmon, and that was a good defensive possession by Colorado. You'd see Ted Boyle react when that deep shot went down. Harmon got hundreds of shots up before anybody else was on the court today. There's Evan Batty. 10 to 20 from three-point range in Pac-12 play, Batty is. Nick Clifford, meanwhile. Bartholomew drives against Young. Take it back outside. Clifford on the drive. Didn't get the rule. Rebound and finally Dante. Young attacks the rack. Rebound Gary. That's, Second opportunity. That's going to be a problem for Colorado. They can't let Oregon get extra shots. And Richardson, a three-pointer with Jabari Walker's hand in his face. Well, that's the advantage for Oregon right there. They shoot the three very well, and they take more of them than the Buffaloes. 46% for Richardson. Number two years ago, he led the Pac-12 in three-point field goal percentage. As a sophomore, he backed it up again last year. I think he was 40% last year, so he, he's been consistent from day one. Where he's tough, he shoots the three, not just with his feet set. He can do it off the dribble. A lot of players, very good shooters, but they can only do it with their feet standing still. Will Richardson does it either way. That makes him very difficult to defend. Walker having to be aware of his ability to drive to the hoop, so he had to play off him a little bit there and helped him create his own shot. Area drives on Jabari Walker. Young open momentarily for a three and instead takes the mid range from the angle. And shoot around today, Tad Boyle told his team, our perimeter defense will be challenged more than in any other game this year. So many good one on one players wearing the green and white. They need this one from De Silva. Goes out. And officials look at each other and the ball goes to Colorado. Dana Altman. Three-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year. One of just five active Division I head coaches with 24 consecutive winning seasons. The others are in the Hall of Fame. And he will be shortly, and he just got his 700th win of all places at Pauley Pavilion. Yeah, yeah. Look across the street at the Wild Duck, and there's a sign on the window that says, Congratulations, Dana, on joining the 700 Club. It's a pretty small club. Dante with the jam. And finally, Dante, 71.6 field goal percentage. Full credit to the Ducks doing what they just did there consistently, getting the ball inside to him. History. 
played at Kansas for Larry Brown, 1981 to 1985. Was a senior, was a captain and, of the team. And I think Danny he, Manning was a freshman. I, and I think a year for Ted, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, be before that, I think he played for two great coaches, but I didn't realize until this afternoon, looking again at his biography, that he started his collegiate coaching right here at the University of Oregon with Jerry Green for three years. Then went with Jerry Green to Tennessee. Mark Turgeon was also on that staff here at Oregon. Walker's three doesn't go. Gary for three. Nailed it. It's a 13-0 Ducks lead. Four of those shots have not even hit the rim, Rich. They're just going through clean. Bartholomew, teardrop, got it. And the Buffs are on the board. Keyshawn did a smart thing right there. He was waiting. He was actually looking to make the dump-off pass to Evan Batty. The defense never came, so he took the runner himself. Luke O'Brien, K.J. Simpson, Elijah Parquet getting ready to check in for the Buffaloes, trying to avoid being run out of the gym tonight here in Eugene. Richardson, baseball pass, Gary A. Fall away. Everything going for the Ducks. They're six of seven on the floor. And I'll tell you, Colorado doing a good job staying in front of their defender. They're making shots over the top. Yeah, that's what Tad Boyle told us today, that his team does well. Just good stand-up defense. Ducks big early. 15 to 2. Back in a moment to Eugene. But in transition, the baskets haven't come in transition. They've come from half court offense, one on one play, and good perimeter shooting. Deshaun Bartholomew to the free throw line for three. After getting fouled by Will Richardson, fifth in the Pac 12 in free throw percentage at 81%. Last year as a backup to McKinley Wright, 30 games, averaged three and a half points. And this year, he's the guy at the controls, 10 and a half points a game. He's a real talent. He's also young. Young point guards give coaches gray hair or no hair. Uh, he's very, very talented. It takes a while to learn, particularly when he did get to play behind McKinley Wright. But Ted Boyle's used to God, he just put the ball in his hands and you knew you were going to get exactly what you wanted for a long time. Keyshawn Bartholomew will become that. And young point guards, it's a challenge. And we just got even younger it's kj simpson we got a freshman point guard on board now yeah kj simpson julian hammond two freshmen who can really handle the ball part of a great recruiting class for colorado this year young crossover he gets luke o'brien turn around spin got it how do you defend that you don't he did a good job he allowed the penetration but the big mistake was leaving his feet on the pump fake and that made it an easy finish inside there's Elijah Parquet playing for the first time in three games. Simpson. And out of bounds. Last touch by Colorado. I actually thought that was off Davion Harmon. I thought Davion Harmon knocked it from there. But there's Jacob Young back and forth. That is a really tough cover for Luke O'Brien. Jacob Young makes his living in the lane. Very few threes. He's a driver, an excellent defender, creates a lot of that offense with his steals. Young after the weave, takes the ball into the lane, tried to kick it back outside to Harmon, but KJ Simpson got ahead on it. Two turnovers for Colorado. They had 16 against USC and 21 against UCLA. They've been fortunate because they were dead ball turnovers so far tonight where Oregon had to take it out of bounds so they didn't get a chance to get running. Uh, they gave their opponents opportunity to run. Uh, and that cost them the games, frankly. Uh, you just can't turn it over that much against an excellent team. And UCLA is every bit of that. Foul on Jabari Walker. First team foul on Colorado. Walker's coming out of the game. And Tristan De Silva back in. Tab Boyle's trying to get some people to defend right here in front of the Colorado bench. And so far, that has not been the case. Coach, when you're leading your teams, would you prefer to have at the end of the game in a close game your team be on defense in front of you or on offense? Defense. You want you want them right in front of you on D. Yeah, I, I, I just felt that uh, you know so many games come down to getting those stops at the end that we'd like to have them there. 
Big range line drive off the glass from Parquet didn't go. Young pushes the ball up the floor. Gary fumbled it, takes it into the lane. And one, puts to Gary in the bucket. And Tristan DeSoto the foul. Yeah, that one didn't look as much like transition because it took some time to develop, but that's what it was. They didn't have a good matchup on Gary. A. He just went in. Uh, the other Colorado Buffaloes were back, did a good job taking away the initial. But by the time they got matched up and Tristan De Silva found him, it was too easy for Quincy Garrier. Garrier completes a three point play. They want him to have a bigger inside presence. Almost half his shots have come from beyond the arc. Dan Altman says, I'm okay with one and three. Yeah, exactly. The percentage dictates that. If you're not shooting the ball well, it probably means you're taking too many shots because your shot selection is not good. And Dana Altman has been really good preaching that over the years. It did not look like a good shot. Evan Batty's a very good stroke for a big man. He was a little bit pressured that time. Looked like a forced shot. Uh, 10 of 20 in Pac-12 play. Now 10 of 21. Of course, Coach... Uh... You, you were at the uh, front of the curve there, coaching Arvita Sabanis with the Blazers, who he was one of the first big guys to step out and stroke it. Yeah, and he could do it, but he could also pass. That's what made him so, so difficult. Uh, he could stand out on the perimeter and make shots, but he could also find cutters. Uh, it's amazing. One of the best passing big men ever. It's amazing when you have a big man that passes it that well, how quickly the other four players learn to move without the ball. William shot doesn't go. Rebound Jabari Walker playing early on with a foul. Jabari is. Harmon has on KJ Simpson from behind. Tristan De Silva. Got it. Tristan De Silva came in 34% from three point range. He's hit 10 of his last 21 from deep. And he was too wide open there. That was just a comfortable shot. There was nobody within four feet of him as he shot that. Here's Frank Kepnock. Well, turn around. Pump fakes inside, and their footwork has been very, very good. O'Brien. Oh, bounce pass. And Jabari Walker wanted the foul, didn't get it. Harmon sealed off by Parquet. Finds the open man, Williams. Three-pointer rattles out. Gary, an offensive rebound, but got stripped. Oh, pocket pass from Parquet to De Silva, who gets fouled. What good interior passes the last two possessions from Colorado, but when you dig this big a hole, you got to finish those opportunities. O'Brien made a beautiful entry pass. That time was Parquet, but uh, they're just not getting enough stops on the other end, Rich. Nine for 13, 69% is way too easy, and it's really been one extreme or the other. They've knocked down three threes, and virtually every other shot has been in the paint attacking the rim. Rivaldo Soares comes in for the Ducks. Quincy Garrier comes out. Soares at JC All American last year at South Plains College. Teammates have had great success with some JC oh, transfers they, they, over the years. They certainly have. And Chris Duarte, I'll tell you what, he is just doing it in the NBA right now. He's playing extremely well. Uh, he and Evan Mobley, two pack 12ers, playing as well as any rookies in the NBA. Mobley, Zaire Williams, Chris Duarte, three lottery picks last year. Pac-12 had the most of any conference. And then Josh Christopher at ASU was taken also in the first round. But Duarte had 27 points in the OT win over the Warriors on Thursday. Rebound O'Brien. Colorado Buffaloes happy not to see Chris Duarte. He had 45 points in two games against him last year. It was 18 of 30 from the floor. Exactly. Good help there by Eric Williams. It wasn't his man, but as he went by defending the cutter, he reached in and he created the steal. A held ball as Parquet got the hands on it as Jacob Young took it in. 22-10, Ducks lead. Colorado. Colorado leads the series 13 to 10 and the home teams have dominated in the series the Buffs have not won here since 2013 the Ducks have never won in Boulder they're 0 and 10 there and they'll have a shot 
coming up in nine days. First of two games in a 10 day span between these two. Well, these two teams have been very, very consistent with their play. And the CU Event Center and at United Arena, not popular places for the visiting team. How about Nick Clifford bringing the ball up, huh? Nick Clifford is good now and going to get even better. Lob to Walker, who puts it in. Good pass inside from Parquet. That's a tough finish inside. Beat his man Soares, and he also beat Kepner coming from the other side, as he loves to do to block shots. Jabari Walker, huge game in the NCAA tournament. Went over Georgetown last year, 24 points, 5 of 5 on threes. Was the most points by a CU freshman in any game since 2017. Now we got a three second violation. At the other end, look at the lob to Jabari Walker from Parquet. But a strong move, and for youngsters watching at home, he got it up and on the glass. Once you get the ball on the glass, there's nothing the defender can do. You try and shoot it straight in, you're going to get it blocked, particularly with something like Kepnan coming over from the weak side. That was a good, strong move inside by Jabari Walker. Shades could. of his father, Samaki, inside. Ten years in the NBA with Mavericks, Spurs, Lakers, and others. Samaki Walker won a ring with the Lakers 20 years ago. Samaki Walker was a good player going back. Nice help again. That time it was Davion Harmon. Richardson driving to the left. He's left-handed. He gets fouled. Love this defensive help. It was Eric Williams earlier. Watch, this is not his man. That's the pass. He beat his own defender, Will Richardson, but Davion Harmon comes from the weak side. When the ball was in the air, he started his move, and he went in and chopped it right out of his hands. That's excellent help defense. Two of the last four possessions by the Oregon Ducks. The Ducks' first point in the last two minutes and 22 seconds. Foul was on Nick Clifford. His first. Richardson misses the second. He's not a bad free throw shooter, but he's not as good a free throw shooter as you would expect from somebody that strokes the three the way he does and somebody that gets to the free throw line, Will Richardson. 74% last year, 72 this year. Up and under reverse. <laughs> That was really wow. up and under. That went way up, almost to the level of the 30-second clock and came down. Nice pick-and-roll play. That's a really good look there. That's out of our picture. And then, <laughs> then comes back in. Good look and a really good play. The youngster, we, you know, we talked about this class. Uh, very, very talented. Walker completes a three-point play. Jabari Walker was a freshman last year. And I think he even surprised his coach, Tad Boyle, with how well he played. This year, he's the guy. They graduated five of their top seven scores, and so has Kepnon. Good soft touch by Frank Kepnon. Yeah, and shoot him down. Had a great elevation. He just turned in. You let him turn to that left shoulder. That's an easy finish for him inside. Batty defended by Kepnon. Clifford, Patty, got tipped by Williams, brought down by Soares, and here comes Richardson. It's a good look for Evan Batty. He normally is going to finish that. They leave Williams open. It was 15 days ago with 13 seconds left at Oregon State. He canned a three-pointer to break a tie, the key shot in a victory. Eric Williams traditionally has been a very good three-point shooter. Struggled for a little bit. Good, good for him to see that go down. That's a Parquet. This fires on a three. Parquet, a good three-point shooter that's struggling this year. 42% yeah. last year, 19% this year. He was almost just short of 50-40-90. It was the overall field goal that kept him from getting that. His numbers compared to last year, Rich, are really surprising. And the team is still winning despite that. Yep, not now. Dante back in. Pretty good two-headed monster that the Ducks have in the middle. Dante will play about 25 minutes. Kept on about 15. Nice little floater there. Bartholomew has a ton of ability. And again, as we said, uh, when he learns to be consistent and the decision-making just improves a little bit, uh, he's going to be an excellent point guard for Tad Boyle.
And Tad Boyle, expert at developing players. Richardson's three, misfires, gets his own rebound. Kick it back outside Williams. I asked Tad Boyle about developing players and his reputation for that. Oh, nice little pass from Dante to Soares. Nice finish right there. And yeah, Dana tried to deflect that. He gave credit to the assistants, which is... Tad Boyle did, yeah. Excuse me, Tad uh, gave credit to those guys. Uh, Billy Billy Greer, Mike Cronin have been with him a long time. Rick Ray, they do do an excellent job. But the thing that Tad has that very few other programs do... They get guys for four years. They're not big on taking transfers in, so they get a chance to work with their guys and develop them. A lot of other programs, players don't stay for four years. They get a lot of native Coloradoans playing for them. Last couple of Gatorade players of the year from Colorado on this roster, Clifford. And it's tipped out by Richardson. He was fortunate he didn't, uh, didn't turn it over right there. But deflecting credit to his assistant coaches. Assistant coaches yeah. it's, it's a sign of a good leader, coach. Of course. You deflect the credit and you take the blame. Well, and, and, and that's true, but both of these coaches would be the first to tell you, excellent assistant coaches on both of these benches tonight. Two opportunities for Batty gets a second one to fall. Yeah, the Dutch crew of Chris Crutchfield, Mike Menega, Kevin McKenna. Crutchfield taking over for Tony Stubblefield, now the head coach at DePaul. It's unusual to see a, a new face on that Oregon bench. That staff was together for a very long time. Oh. Soares on the drive, doesn't go. Rebound, Walker. Ducks have played eight players. All eight have scored. And five. The five scored so quickly it was unbelievable. Then they got help right away off the bench. Doesn't go for Walker. It's a tough play right there. Jabari forced the official to make the call. That's a good, aggressive move. 7.57 left here in the first half. Ducks by 11. It's 11. That's not great, but compared to what it was, uh, that's very good. As they get closer to halftime, I think he'll actually give him a goal. Rich at the four-minute timeout. He'll say, hey, let's get it under 10 or let's get it down to six. That'll be good for half. Last night against ASU, USC got off to a slow start. They had just... 10 points the first 14 minutes of the game and they closed the half on a 21 to 3 run against the Sun Devils and ended up winning big Colorado meanwhile they're looking for their first quadrant one win of the season they're 0 and 5 in Q1 games are games that are expected to be Q1 by the end of the year and and the ones they have left are going to two of them are going to be very tough they've got to go to LA uh, for USC and UCLA, and of course they have the Ducks coming back to the event center. So uh, hopefully somebody else from the Pac-12 gets into that quad one. But you need those quad one wins come March. Got another drive, rebound soars. Another offensive rebound for the Ducks. Williams over Bartholomew rattles out. He's had a couple. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say they've been down. The ones he's missed went halfway down and came out, Rich. Here's Batty against Dante. I think in Folly's length is bothering Evan Batty. He's having trouble. He's kind of leaning back to get the shot over in Folly Dante. Bothers a lot of people. Richardson's three-pointer doesn't go. He's one for three from beyond the arc in this one. Here comes Julian Hammond the third. Averages about nine minutes a game. Got to start a couple of weeks ago. Or rather, he was the first uh, guy in off the bench instead of K.J. Simpson. When Simpson was out with concussion. Crossover by Richardson. Dante pounding it a bit. De Silva not getting any help. D and Dante's shot doesn't go. Yeah, Tristan De Silva did a good job. He didn't let him turn to that left shoulder as much as he wanted to. Richardson on Clifford after the switch. Good D. Clifford lost it. Five turnovers on Colorado. The Ducks have turned it over twice. Colorado got back that time. That's a live ball turnover. They got back. But... Dante couldn't handle it. Clifford came out of the pile with it. Bartholomew rattles out. Rebound soars. Rivaldo soars coming down with his fourth rebound of the game. Williams gets fouled. They go to the free throw line. Bailed him out. 
Tell you what, Colorado's had some good passes. This is a play in transition. Keyshawn Bartholomew has got to finish this. We've seen that a number of times already tonight, Rich. Good passes into the paint. They haven't been able to finish. We saw, we saw that against UCLA and USC. Those 19 and then 11 field goals missed are in the paint. They're doing a good job with penetration or interior pass. They're not doing a good job finishing inside. You can't beat quality teams unless you score points inside 19 misses in the paint against usc and they lost by three uh, unbelievable really we've seen that already tonight there's been some very good interior passes that time it was a pass in transition and Keyshawn wasn't able to finish again this is not an easy team to finish inside against particularly with Dante and frank Kepner protecting that rim williams comes out after making one or two davion Harmon comes back in Ducks, meanwhile, trying to do something that hasn't been done in the Pac-12 since the 86-87 season. So what's that, 35 years ago now? <laughs> they started 0-2. The last team to start 0-2 and, and win their next five, UCLA. The Ducks have done that. UCLA then went, won their next six games. K.J. Simpson with a three-pointer. Pac-12's excellent research department dug that one up. And we got a leg up on getting that seven straight and uh, as Dana Altman told us uh, the real Achilles so far for Oregon has been free throw shooting and for I don't want to take anything away from the Arizona State and Stanford wins but they were unable Oregon just shot the ball poorly from the free throw line in both of those games Armin reaching behind KJ Simpson out of bounds last touch by Oregon that's to the ire of the pit crew the student section <laughs> Dana, Dana Altman's upset with the call. I don't think Frank Kepnang touched it. Went right through the wicket. Yeah, exactly. Will Laughlin playing for just the second time this year. Lawson Lovering out with an injury suffered in practice. And so Laughlin getting those minutes. And his shot doesn't go, but the put back. Doesn't hesitate. Put, put it up. That boil was just bubbling over talking about Will Laughlin. Uh, former walk-on. They gave him a scholarship for this semester. And of course, I'm prejudiced. He went to Seattle Prep, where both of my sons went, played for excellent coach and Mike Kelly at, at Seattle Prep. It was just his second field goal attempt. Second Good young shot doesn't go. Rebound. Gary A goes up and gets fouled. It's good defense on the perimeter by KJ Simpson, but I'll tell you. I expected Colorado to be the team dominating on the boards, and Oregon has really done a good job on the offensive glass so far. 31-26, Oregon. Remember, they scored the first 13 points of the game. And four offensive rebounds uh, for five second-chance points already. Uh, the Buffaloes only with two offensive rebounds. Here in now with nine points. There's Will Laughlin. Walk on awarded the scholarship for the spring semester. Just one year of varsity basketball in high school. He played lacrosse and football. Say he's a great athlete. He was a swimmer. He's a lacrosse player. I mean, he could play a number of Division One sports. He was actually practicing with the Colorado women's team. He was a practice player for the women's team, and then came came across. Yeah, he came to Colorado to play club lacrosse, practice with the women uh, women's team. After the steal, laid up and in by Gary. Ducks applying the pressure. Simpson lost it. And here's Lockwood, right. double team, and tried to win it. Yeah, he stepped ahead of himself right there. Ted Boyle spent so much time. You see him over there now, both hands up, telling his guys, relax. They spent time. But Oregon comes at you. They use that three-quarter court delay press for a big chunk of the game, and then all of a sudden, they extend it out full court and start trapping. And Dana Altman has a great knack for when to apply that pressure. He created a couple turnovers. Both teams' average opponent's possession is 18 seconds. That's the most in the Pac-12, according to Ken Palm. They defend. Both of these teams defend. See it again here. We're under five seconds on the clock. Richardson forces it up, trying to draw a foul, and does. Bailed out on the foul by Elijah Parquet. His second. Yeah, Tad. Tad Boyle saying he went straight up the to the free throw line. 
for three. Richardson, 72 percenter. Got Elijah Parquet in the air. Parquet's argument, I think, is that he leaned into it. Left his feet. Our USAA leader is Will Richardson. Leads the Pac-12 in three-point field goal percentage, 46%. Just ahead of Andre Yakamovsky of Washington State. Had a big game the other day. You referenced it earlier, Rich. Uh, 47% as a sophomore. Led the Pac as a junior last year, 40.3%. So we're talking... Very consistent three-point shooter, Will Richardson. Last year, Richardson had a thumb injury that cost him first ten weeks of the season. Here's the full-court pressure now. They like to the trap out of this. This has ramped up their pressure. A.J. Simpson responds to the pressure. They'd like to get Jabari a little bit more involved. Only four field goal attempts. They've been batty on the drive, and now Simpson puts it up over Young and hits a three. K.J. Simpson. That's his 10th three-pointer this year in 32 attempts. We said they needed to stay in touch. It's nine. Had it down to five. It's at nine right now. I think uh, Tad Boyle will be real happy to see it down around six. Hey, well, drive by Richardson. He's not real happy about that. That's a, basically an uncontested layup. Uh, Will Richardson and going left. I mean he can go either way and he loves that in and out fake But he can't beat you going left all the way for the lane Three second violation called on Jabari Walker Earlier in this game there was one called against Oregon and Dana Altman was John with the officials and I think he said hey you got to watch the other end too. I think that's what that was about both of them were called by Mike Greenstein and He's evened it up Young drives against De Silva. Your drop doesn't go. Volleyball in the air by Jacob Young. Here comes Colorado. De Silva wide open for three. Got it. He's got a nice stroke. You read his numbers before how good they were. I'll tell you what, that's the second wide open three he's had. He's too good a shooter to allow that. Ten days ago was three for five against ASU. He's two for three in this one. Simpson leaves Harmon open for three. That doesn't go. Richardson high on the air for the rebound. Tried to dish it to Gary. A. Looked like it wasn't quite ready. This over this time on the drive. And kick it back outside the batty. Nice pass. Simpson to batty. And lucky there wasn't an and one. Yeah, it should have been an and one. No question, Rich. I'll tell you what. Very impressive offensive possession by Colorado. Passed up a couple of looks. They got good penetration. Still a hundred plus seconds left. They need to maintain it right here. Yeah, it'd be great to get closer, but six or five would be, I think, wonderful for Colorado going in and a little disappointing for Oregon. Ducks scored the first 13 points of the game. Some teams might have packed it up at that point, but not Colorado, not a tad loyal team. Richardson gets the bucket. He's got 11. It's that leadership you were talking about in the open, Rich. Uh, pretty good run there for Oregon out of a timeout. Will Richardson steps up and scores. Bartholomew puts it up over Richardson. O'Brien high in the air for the rebound. Walker reloads and got it. Big the old board by O'Brien. Big rebound there by Luke O'Brien and Jabari with the three to keep it close. Luke O'Brien, number zero. Is that is that zero or is he like Damian Lillard? Does uh, <laughs> O'Brien wear the letter O? He means got a whole slew of reasons why he does it. Down to five again. Good defense there by Bartholomew. Again, the shot clock under five. Ooh, that's a push. Offensive foul. foul on Will Richardson. His second foul of the game. This is really good defense by the youngster. He did a great job staying in front, staying in front of him. Will just extended that forearm. Once you extend the forearm, uh, that's an easy call for the officials right there. The senior against the freshman. 
Richardson against the freshman Simpson. Now here's Bartholomew. AJ Simpson against Harmon. Big possession right here for Colorado going in. And they turn it over. Tad's telling him you were open, you could have shot it. He played unselfishly, but I think he had a layup himself right there. Uh, Keyshawn Bartholomew. And again, I'm on the young guy a little bit, but I mean, that's a point guard. In my opinion, one of the bigger possessions of the first half. And he makes a careless play. Should have shot it himself. And instead, not only does he make, I think, the incorrect pass, he throws it out of bounds. He hit it to you. You made a good catch here. I did. Thank you. Nine first half turnovers for Colorado. Under five now. And Harmon goes on the drive. Fall away. And so the Ducks score the first 13 points of the ball game. And then they get outscored by eight the remainder of the half. And they take the 42-37 lead into halftime. Good. Ben, it's where you're going and the not-so-small impact you'll have on the world. Second half starting, Pac-12 basketball presented by Wendy's. Ducks led 13-0, and Colorado's trimmed it to five. Start of the second half here. Here's Garrier inside against Jabari Walker. Forces that ball into the hoop. Forces is a good word, Rich, right there. He just overpowered him. Uh, they let it go a little bit, a little bit of contact right there, but uh, he got his shoulder into Jabari Walker, and then it was an easy finish. for a little spin tip back up and in I think by Gary an own goal exactly right <laughs> Jabari gets the credit says thank you the gentleman who's guarding in soccer they don't give you the credit no exactly <laughs> block shot by the Silva Jacob Young got by him right there but he stayed in the play watch it right there there are Three guys going up. I think the last hand to touch it was Quincy Gurrier. Well, you tell him go with two hands instead of one, but sometimes you got to try and tap it. Usually not into the opponent's back. Got to came out to set the pick, driving right down the lane. Richardson will spin. And gets it to go. He likes that move when he's going right, Rich. He won't necessarily take that last step. He'll stop and pivot and shoot it back with that left hand. Batty for three. He had been 10 of 20 from three point range and Pac 12 play coming in. And Batty. I was going to give him credit for listening to us, telling him we needed more Evan Batty here in the second half, but didn't go. The Clifford's three from the corner. Got it. Second chance points for Colorado. They've got a dozen second chance points in the game. That sophomore from Colorado Springs. I, I like what he's doing. He's improved. Uh, Talking about Nick Clifford. Yeah, and he does a good job moving his feet. He's had a tough matchup all night. Does a real good job moving his feet, staying in front of his opponent. Good job by Batty there. And by De Silva to come in with a help defense. And we got a held wow. ball and Bartholomew again against Richardson on the drive. It's twice give Duck has taken the ball in the yep. lane on a drive, and there's been a held ball. Give him, give him uh, credit. Keyshawn Bartholomew gets credit for the steal. Also, I believe it's a jump ball, but it goes to them. I'm giving him credit for the steal. And, and, whether, uh, whether that's and legal so or not, book. I don't know. It's good. Yeah, you're right. There's a steal by Young. Take it down all the way to the rack. Well, there's what we talked about. Oregon needing more off, Rich. Creating some offense with their defense. They overplay passing lanes so well. And Jacob Young does it as well as anybody. That's why he has all those steals. There's another one. Colorado turns it over for the second consecutive time. That's 11 for the Buffs. Korea drives it in. And Walker tried to absorb the foul, and there was no call. And his eyes are goggling out of his head. He can't believe there was no call. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. Bad news for Tad Boyle is now we're getting some offense from the defense, creating those turnovers. Another turnover there. This one's a dead ball turnover. Last two scores for Oregon. First of all, Jacob Young with the steal. 
Gore does not care for that. That's become almost the automatic anytime you set a screen. I mean, if you move a muscle, uh, it becomes an offensive foul. That's, if I'm not mistaken, three consecutive turnovers for the Buffs. And you the are really, not mistaken. The really bad news is the Ducks cash the first two in on this end of the floor. This will be a timeout if they cash this one in. Dante trying to drive the ball back into the lane. That was ill-advised. Walker from Nick Clifford. So Colorado with an open court bucket. Oh, created by Nick Clifford. Good help defense and an excellent pass in transition. Maybe on Harmon drives past Walker and fights it home. It's unusual to see these lefties finishing with their right hand. There are usually three lefties on the floor for Oregon, sometimes four, when Eric Williams joins the other three. High off the glass. Nice shot. By Tough Sean shot. Bartholomew. Yeah, split two defenders and had to go high off the glass to get the finish. Here's Richard Sennis. Nick Clifford plays him a little bit toward Richardson's left side. Gary puts it up over to Silva and knocks it down. Gary he's two for three on three pointers. It's like the first possession of the game, a really good defensive possession by Colorado and went for naught at the end. Ooh, we got a flop warning. Bartholomew answers, flopping warning. But see Garrier now with 19 on the extra, floor. extra points for doing it while you're sitting down. Yeah, exactly. Hanging on to the balloon. Dante out getting some counsel from Dana Altman and Frank Kepnong in. The warning now, don't forget, the next one will be a T. Flopping warning was yep. to Garrier. Garrier backing it in against Jabari Walker. Pump fake, doesn't go out of bounds. Back to the Ducks. Roy Walker did a better job that time against the back in the post up than he did in the first one. But again, went for the rebound with one hand. Unusual for Jabari. He's a very good rebounder, but he couldn't secure that one. Well, Richardson with the mid range. Team offensive rebound with the same result. Two more points off the offensive glass. Very unusual what Oregon's been able to do against Colorado on the offensive boards. One of the Colorado tenants is you got to out rebound the other team by eight or more. Walker able to get it inside after it was tipped, and he puts it in. Big to big, Evan Batty. It's kind of a ricochet pass, but it eventually got there and he got the assist. Another one is holding the opponents to below 40% shooting, and when they do that, hold the opponents below 40%, out rebound them by eight or more in Tad Boyle's tenure there, 78 and five. And Boyle's done a great job. Really kind of, I think, a little bit under the radar. He's done an exceptional job at Colorado. Good contest right there. It's the five on four. Jacob Young real slow getting up. Put back up and end the tip jam by Walker. And Jacob Young ended in our cameraman's lap, and that allowed a five on four. And then there was nobody there to box out Jabari Walker. Put two hands on that one, Rich. Again, it's a five-point game. That was the differential at halftime. Last Buffs win came here in 2013 when Andre Roberson had 10 points and 13 rebounds. Gary puts it up over Walker. Batty coming down with a rebound. Foul called. That against Kepnong. I see Jacob Young as he always does, right to the rim. Pretty good contest right there, but now it's a five on four coming down the floor. And you see Jabari Walker just comes running in. Quincy Gurry actually was there. He didn't get a body on him. Jabari just came over the top. Will Richardson saying, what am I doing in here with these guys? <laughs> Hazardous to your health. Yes. Simpson sealed off by Gary A. Listen, Batty's not even looking for his three. I'm really surprised. They're doing a good job getting out, but he's a good three-point shooter. Yeah. Wing denial has been a big key of what the Ducks have done. There's the air ball, but pulled down by Luke O'Brien. That is a tough possession. Dana Altman looks at his guys. 
That was very fortunate. We had an, an air ball. Shades of Whittington to Lorenzo Charles, yeah, right? Yeah, really good look, and then the ball goes out of bounds. Ooh. And a foul before the inbound called against Quincy Garrier. Yeah. Reached across, that's pretty much automatic. You grab the jersey, it's like a, was a defensive lineman all the time. You of the multi sports. Yeah, I think you're right. First foul on Garrier. Five point game. Doesn't go for KJ Simpson. Good look. We cut it to two. That's as close as they've been, I believe. Yeah, it was 13 nothing. Since the closest they've been is five on a couple of occasions. Ducks did lead by as many as 15 in the first half. Eric Williams puts it up over O'Brien. Larry Walker now with eight rebounds. Colorado. Colorado needs to make sure they're back in this. They get a high percentage shot just like that. And they're back within three. 12 39 to go. In a long time, you referenced the 2013, the last time the Buffs were able to win in Eugene. Home team has won 13 consecutive games in the head to head series. Harmon, after stepping past Parquet, doesn't go. Ducks have gone cold. And Foul on the rebound called against Oregon, and Dana Altman is fit to be tied. Uh, they're upset because it looks like he bridged him, but I do think Frank came over the top. Dana Altman does not agree with me. We'll take a look at the replay. And the student section doesn't agree either. There's the miss. And I backed into him. I have to agree with the Oregon bench on that one. I thought he was backing into him when he was up in the air. Comes out. Dante back in. Three fouls on Frank Kepnock. And a three point deficit for Colorado, as you mentioned, closest they've been. And one foul on Dante De Silva with a bucket and a chance to tie the game. That's the pass where they were looking for the lob to Elijah Parquet in the beginning of the play. It wasn't there. Excellent decision. KJ Simpson, the freshman, finds him. Look at this. Great cut. He waited till Dante came at him, and then Tristan De Silva, a little bit of a fake, got Dante in the air, an opportunity to tie this one up. We are tied after the Ducks led at one time 13 nothing and later by 15 points in the first half. Silver very efficient four for five two for three three for three from the free throw line can't do much better than that. Reaching foul as Harmon took the ball into the lane. That's on Luke O'Brien. 1150 left. We got a ball game tied at 57. First 14. But trending upward. They're back in the fifth. They're, they're, Absolutely. Everybody knows they're much better. They'll be, I, again, easy for me to stay sitting over here. Dana would come over and uh, push me. He said, don't you remember what it was like when you were coaching? It's not going to be easy, but this is a good basketball team, as Dana Altman's teams always are. Especially toward the end of the season, the yep. second half of the year. It gets better. In his tenure. What you want 75 percent of their games best in the pack well yeah, you that's what you want to do as a coach have your team get better that's what Dana altman's teams always do dante back in the net against the silva simpson came out for the help and now Harmon on the drive with one to shoot and draws the foul i'm just bragging on kj simpson and he leaves his feet there was a number of times that happened in the first half uh pump fake Oregon does that as well as anybody. They drill it all the time. We talked about these assistants giving them credit. Uh, Kevin McKenna, Mike Menega, Chris Crutchfield. Uh, they drill it and they execute it very, very well. We saw Will Richardson even on his layup. That's a pivot and a pump fake before he shoots it. Jabari getting a rest, Evan Batty. Evans got to step up. I think Evans steps up in the last 10 minutes. Colorado's got a great chance to win this one, but I, it's going to be hard, I think, for them to do that without Evan being more productive. Batty averaging 12 and a half a game. He's got just four in this one. Maybe on Harmon makes them both. Two-point duck lead. Here's the pressure. 
O'Brien finding Parquet, who draws the foul. He's saying he was in the restricted area. Dante saying, hey, I went straight up, but uh, you're in the restricted uh, area. Uh, Context. Three fouls on Dante to go along with three on Frank Hepna. Well, he's not in the restricted area to begin with. And there is a bunch of contact. And Foley's got a, a gripe on that one. Nice parquet, 75% are coming in. Got up to a great start to the season. Hit the game-tying shot against Montana State in the season opener. Descended to OT. And the Buffs escaped with a win in Boulder. Just hasn't shot it well. Very uncharacteristically rich uh, for Elijah Parquet. And again, not that he's not playing well tonight, but I think we can see a little bit of rust from not playing those two games against the uh, Trojans and the Bruins. Yeah, he's a 42 percenter last year. Ninth peak uh, from three-point range. 19 percent coming into this year. Uh, this game, just six of 31. Evan Batty off back off his heels and then just knocked it in over him. Holly Dante, last four games coming into this one, 18 to 22 field goals, had six points against Washington on Sunday. He's got four tonight. Late in the clock again. Colorado's never led. Parquet mid range. O'Brien offensive rebound. Everybody just barely got into the front court before that pass got there. Dante with the defense on the drive by KJ Simpson. Richardson very patient there, didn't have a shot. Good transition defense. Is Gary already with a career with a season high for the Ducks? Career high 27 at Syracuse. He's got 19 and got an over the top foul too. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. Strong move though. Folly Dante did a great job. He didn't get a block shot for that, but he completely altered the shot. He forced it. It's not easy to finish inside against Dante and Kepman. Second foul on Garrier. Ian Harmon come out. Rivaldo Soares, Eric Williams in the game for Oregon. Soares had a good first half, pulled down four rebounds. The Danish thing with that tight eight man rotation. Yeah, I haven't seen Nate Biddler, Isaac Johnson in this one. Three by Batty. He hits it, and the Buffs lead for the first time in the game. There we go, Evan. What, Evan got his 1,000th point, and that made it. I should wait till this possession is over, and we can deal with the one-point game before I talk about Evan Batty's 1,000th oh, point. One thousand point. Back in Parquet, and they call Parquet for the honest. Two times when Richardson has drawn a foul against Elijah Parquet, and Parquet didn't think he fouled him. Well, he, he did foul him. He had good position. He's got to go straight up with his arm right there. That's a good job moving his feet. Watch Elijah Parquet. Good job, and then reaches in. You got to go straight up and down with the hand. Yeah, that was more of a foul than the first one. Yeah. This might have been a foul, too. That definitely yep, was. For sure. No question. Funny how players never think they commit fouls. I'll finish that uh, Evan Batty, that class of 2017. Evan Batty came into Colorado. Kenley Wright, Sean Lawrence, Tyler Bay, and Evan becomes the fourth player from that class to score 1,000 points for Colorado. That's a pretty good recruiting class. Pretty good class indeed. He graduated in August, journalism major, working on his master's in organizational leadership, Evan Batty. I think like a lot of players, it's funny, you see seniors listed on, you know, next to players. They all have that free year, if you will. Uh, a lot of players with the opportunity to come back, even though they're already seniors and even though they've graduated. There could be a lot of school records broken. Probably. Yeah, for sure. Had 
and he waited too long and they still got it in Keyshawn Bartholomew gets the assist I thought he waited one dribble too long but Jabari Walker came up with it his third assist of the game and Jabari Walker now has 20 points to lead all scorers Richardson off the glass can't finish Will might have gotten away with a little shove with that right arm. Elijah Park Day is saying, hey, I didn't just fall. I got pushed out of bounds, but they got to stop nonetheless. Buffs leading again by one and the ball. I'll tell you what, you talk about that freshman class that Colorado has brought in. Uh, they get their guys all back and healthy. Uh, was rated the best recruiting class in the Pac-12. Nick Clifford's done a good job tonight. Bartholomew's done a good job. The freshman and sophomore classes are strong for Tad Boyle. Bartholomew on the drive. And it's a three-point Colorado lead. Remember, against UCLA, they trailed by 17. They trimmed it to one, ended up losing by six. They trailed by 15 in this one. You know what they're doing in the second half? They're finishing inside. That was a beautiful finish by Bartholomew there with his left hand. Good hands by Jabari. Yep, able to deflect it and then come up with a steal. Jabari Walker. O'Brien open for three. Got it! it Six-point lead for the Bucs. Excuse me, Rich. It won't show, but Neat Clifford with a good decision. He didn't take the quick shot. They moved it. Bartholomew with another assist over the top. Really good decision. Defense leading to offense. Talked about the sophomore point Fournier, and he has been the difference maker so far for the Colorado Buffalo. All-time leading scorer at Chaminade High School in SoCal, more than 2,300 career points for his career. Average to double-double, 24 and 10, almost average to triple-double, eight assists. Oh, and by the way, he was a 4.0 student. Nathan Young gets one back. Nice setup out of the timeout. Dana Altman isos Young where he's got his left hand coming into the lane. The easy finish. What do the Ducks have to do to get the stops they were getting in the first half, but haven't gotten here in the second half? Well, they turned turnovers have hurt them a little bit, uh, and it's just been good perimeter play by the guards from Colorado. Nice move, and he couldn't finish. Reverse layup by O'Brien didn't Jump go, ball. and a held ball. The arrow points to where the Ducks. We got 6.42 to go. The Buffs trail victory for the Ducks ever in that series. That rivalry. More than 300 games against Washington. In this one, they led 13-0. So I had our statistician, Andrew Goodwin, look it up. What's the biggest margin of victory for Oregon in the series against Colorado? Also 28, which is a stat which we will not be using tonight. <laughs> Amen. Walker goes under the screen to stay with Garrier. Dante sets the ball screen and then slips it. Three-pointer by Young off the glass didn't go. That's not what he does well. He makes some of them, but he's a driver. He's a penetrator. Nine rebounds for Walker now. One shy of a double-double. Tied for fifth among power conference players with eight double-doubles. He's running away in a Pac-12 with double-doubles. There he is. Here's Batty hit the three that finally put them ahead, 62-61. Harmon reaching behind to bat it away from Neat Clifford. Harmon at the other end, can't finish, but draws the foul. Well, Oregon doing what they didn't do as much of in the first half, creating offense from their defense. Davion reaches in, knocks the ball loose. Kick ahead. Unable to finish, and boy, Jabari's right. He, there was not a lot of contact there. Third foul on Jabari Walker. Just missed him. Maybe on Harmon, two for two at the line. Ducks 12 of 14 at the line tonight. Colorado, which last year set a school and Pac-12 record by shooting 81.9%. They are 11 of 11 from the free throw line. Yeah, and normally, or at least for most of this season, Oregon has struggled big time from the free throw line. Tonight, it's been a big plus for them.
There are the Ducks as a team shooting 65% next to last of the past 12. And they're 14 of 16 at the line tonight. And back within two. More pressure, more defense, trying to create some offense. Elijah Parquet just back in the game, able to get it in to O'Brien. Set play. Evan Batty's trying to get, get everybody where they're supposed to be. As is Barthelemy. Eight in the time. O'Brien on the drive. Floater. As the shot clock was expiring. Rebound Dante. Second good drive, but inability to finish by Luke. Dante lost it once, got it back, lost it again. Bad, he knocked it out of his hand. It's a foul. A foul against Davion Harmon. That's his first personal foul. Both teams, Rich, doing a much better job in the second half, forcing turnovers and running off those turnovers. They're actually creating something. We had so many long half-court possessions in the first half, not so much in the second. Colorado four fast break points. The Ducks just one fast break point the game. Now, Bellamy, the sophomore from Montreal. Experience with Canada's fourth place team at the 2018 FIBA World Cup in Argentina. Amazing that he was able to escape Mike Menega and the Oregon recruiting. Oregon's made a living in Canada over the years. Olu Achalu, Devoe Joseph. Richard Amarty, Jason Caliste, Dylan Brooks, Chris Boucher, all Canadians who have come to Oregon. Dylan Ennis, Eugenio Marui. Quincy Gurrier on the rebound, but still Ennis. another one. Young kind of forced that one. Oh. Harmon comes out of it, out of the popcorn machine, as Chicky Baby would have said. <laughs> Chick Curran, the great broadcaster for the Lakers. Actually, the popcorn machine was when you... Uh, had your defender leave his feet. Look out. Oh, nice wild catch. pass by Richardson. Otherwise, you would have had it, PJ. It was ready. The one on the timer didn't draw iron. Shot clock violation of the Ducks' ninth turnover of the game. I thought that was coming to you, PJ. I was starting to look the other way. I was open, but I'll put our neighbors to the north to bed. Ethan Butler, freshman from Toronto, Ontario. Another Canadian. Right. On that Oregon roster. I think they want Jabari Walker. Got a set play from Tad right now. He sets the screen. Bartholomew down the lane to the corner now to Parquet. Here's Jabari. They get it to him, and he cans it. Buffs by six again. This young man's getting better by the week, Rich. And he's already pretty good to begin with. Yes, he is. Jabari Walker came to Colorado in part because of Tad Boyle's reputation for developing players. He's living up to that reputation, and that'll be the first to tell you, Jabari's the one who deserves the credit. Dan Alban, pretty good rapid developing players as well. Guys Look out. Peyton Pritchard. Dylan Brooks got a ton better when he was here. We got another set play by Tad Boyle. He's trying to tighten the vice right now. They match their biggest lead at six. They've trailed by as many as 15. Five to shoot. Parquet puts it up over Richardson. That was not the shot that they wanted. Elijah had no choice, but tough possession there. Good defensive possession for the Ducks. You don't think he had a little bit more time than he thought? He had no one open, though, to throw it to, and that's a bit of a quick shot right there for Quincy Gourier. He's two for five from three-point range. And a timeout taken by Tad Boyle. Buffs lead by six with 2.40 to go. Looking for their first Quadrant One win of the season. A terrible 
but not lighting it up. No, and it, but they've done such a good job in the second half compared on both ends. They're shooting 56% themselves, which tells a lot of the story, but they've held Oregon to only 41. Oregon's only got 25 points here in the second half. They haven't scored in the last three minutes, so Colorado doing it on both ends and not getting the ball in bounds. And they turn it over. Five-second violation. Ducks going with a small lineup. No Dante. No Kepnong. And their best lineup last year was short. Chris Duarte, Eugene Omarui, LJ Figueroa, Eric Williams, all 6'6". Will Richardson, 6'5". That was their best lineup last year. Well, it paid dividends already. They forced a turnover, but De Silva, who couldn't get the ball in bounds, gets it right back. Oh, but only fumbled One the ball. too many. And timeout called smartly by the yeah. sophomore Keyshawn Bartholomew after De Silva had picked the pocket of Will Richardson. De Silva with a really good do Tad Boyle's overall length. Jabari Walker, De Silva, and Evan Batty, but uh, not overly big right now, but getting it in could be the problem. The Green City officials asking the players if they're ready. Here we go. happy to work that shot clock inside 10. Now they got to get after it. Parquet with five to shoot against Richardson. Crossover. Try to dish it off to Walker. Williams got a hand in there. Ducks take it away. That's out of bounds. Last touch by Davion Harmon. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Jacob Young got caught going in. There was a lot of contact down in there. Michael Irvin making sure they reset the... But then the Ducks are that small lineup. According to Ken Pop, they have played all but 2% of their minutes this year with either Dante or Kepnong in the game. Well, it's paid off. I mean, it, it, you've gotten two stops on the last two possessions and late in the clock. Colorado's got to be careful. There they go again. Take away by Young. Yep. Oregon turning them over late, but can they convert? Good defense there by Jabari. Gurrier with a three. He's got 22. Timeout, Oregon. Dana Alvin wants to apply more pressure. That's all. That was the primary thing that Tad Boyle has a couple of times. Interestingly enough, Tad Boyle back with the freshman. We got KJ Simpson and Bartholomew, a couple of point guards on the floor right now, hopefully to help handle this pressure. Showed a lot of confidence in the freshman KJ Simpson, who's had a good game. Bartholomew passes out of the trap, out of bounds, last touched by Richardson. Now, the problem now is you cannot move on the baseline. After a made basket or a made free throw, you can run the baseline. Now, Tristan De Silva is going to have to stay. It's called a spot violation. He's going to be unable to move. Makes it a lot more challenging to get the ball in bounds. Maybe the Ducks just took it away on an inbounds play. And they've only got seven seconds to get the ball across half court when they do get it in. And they take it away again, although De Silva gets it back. They're not going to One get it across. They did. They just barely got it across as Simpson found Jabari Walker. And officials time out. First year players year in and year out for Dana Altman. That's why they don't normally start out real quickly. Drop the clock to 17 seconds. So that was what it was to make sure they had the correct time on the 30 second clock. And I, Colorado would do well to attack quickly. Forget about running time. They got to run offense right now. They need to run effective offense. Simpson finds Batty. Bartholomew Walker being fronted inside. Mismatch with Jacob Young. 17-footer good for De Silva. Wow. Five-point lead. Couldn't catch the ball cleanly. Came up with it and still able to finish. De Silva's got 15 points. Garrier, they need it. Rebound tipped by Walker, brought down by De Silva. Good job, Jabari Walker got a hand on it. They are not going to, yeah, they're going to foul quickly right there. And again, this is where, if the numbers tell the truth, advantage Colorado. Very good free throw shooting team. Oregon not as well. KJ with a good decision again. 
Well, Richardson's got to contest that shot better. De Silva fumbled the ball and then recovered it quickly. Very little time on the clock, but a huge jump shot. One and one for Keyshawn Bartholomew. Eighth foul on the Ducks. And he makes the front end. 81% are coming in. Fifth in the Pac-12. Six-point Colorado lead. That matches their biggest. By the way, another double-double for Jabari Walker. 22 and 10. Also leads the Pac-12 conference. And again, free throw shooting. Advantage Colorado. Bartholomew makes it both. Colorado last year shot 81.9% of school and Pac-12 record. Bartholomew comes out. Parquet in for defense. Going to be interesting to see if there's a dead ball, if he comes back with Bartholomew to ha help handle the pressure with the two point guards on the floor. They let Jacob Young go to the rack. Five point game. Too quick, too easy. The Silva foul by Harmon. Maybe on Harmon's third foul. 76.5 percentage shooter. Dane Altman, not much choice. If they don't get a steal, not little choice but to play the foul game. The mistake Colorado made was letting Jacob Young score that quickly. The kid went in for a layup. Just, you know, make them make a shot from the perimeter. Colorado 15 of 15 at the free throw line tonight. And this is the front end. Both shoulders between himself and the defender used the body well. Yeah, he took advantage of the freshman this time. He got in. KJ's got to learn. It's not good. I just said you don't want them to score quickly, but it's better to allow the layup than the and one. That's just too much contact right there. And we have ourselves a one possession game, and Colorado faced with having to inbound the ball. Two point guards on the floor for Tad Boyle. That's been good to him the last two possessions. Harmon's free throw rattles out, but Williams comes down with it and was on the baseline. It goes to the Buffs. Free throw shooting again bites Oregon. They've shot it very well tonight, but we just saw two big misses, one on either end. Colorado now 15 of 16 from the line. The Ducks 14 of 17. Exceptional shooting by both teams. The Ducks shot right about 50% from the free throw line in their two losses in conference play this year to Stanford and ASU. If they... Make just a few free throws there. Could be they undefeated. Could be six and all. Yeah, they could be undefeated in the league. Seven uh, and all. Spot violation. Tristan De Silva cannot move on the baseline. And he turns it over again. Young. Don't know Four why five. he did that. Quick shot right there. That's four times here in the last few minutes that Colorado has had difficulty getting it in. Three times turning it over and once on a five-second violation. No, they've been terrible. Jacob Young, a lot of confidence, but again, uh, down three. Free throw jumper. It's hard to take, you know, second guess an open three-point jump shot. But again, Keyshawn back on the line. Last time he delivered, and double bonus now. Tristan De Silva missed the front end of a one and one. This is two shots. Either one makes this a two possession game. Makes the first soft touch, as you said, fifth in the league, fifth in the conference in free throw shooting. Interesting substitution here. Neat Clifford on for defense. Batty comes out. Yep. But they'll let me make it a five point game. Got it. Parquet for Bartholomew again. Defensive substitution. He's in the cover, Will Richardson. Nick Clifford trying to stay in front. Down all the way. And a foul called against Clifford. That <laughs> can't believe it, but again, too much contact. Jacob Young still down. In fact, the foul was against Jabari Walker, and that's his fourth. Jacob Young struggling to get up. Talk, we talked his numbers before. 
Free throw shooting, not his strength. Talking a veteran player, though, being asked to step up right now. Well, he was a 73 percenter last year at Rutgers. Yeah, but struggling this year. 67 percent coming in. First trip to the line tonight. I'll Jake. tell you what he's done really well is get the ball up the court. They've been faced with a lot of these uh, possessions where it had to be more than a one possession game late. Jacob Young gets the ball foul line to foul line as quickly as anybody. Bigger problem for Colorado is going to be if he makes the second one, they got to get the ball in bounds, which they have really struggled to do. One more coming for Young. He's got 11 points in the game. And get Evan Batty into the game. He does for Nick Clifford. Oh, they changed the inbound man. Tristan De Silva is not going to take it out. You heard. Tad Boyle yell, Evan, you you inbound the ball. Bartholomew also back in the game. Second one misses. Rebound Jabari Walker. And he gets fouled. Jabari Walker, 72% are coming in. 78% are last season. A lot of free Fallon throws. Derek Williams Jr., his first. A lot of free throws down the stretch. Walker playing with four fouls. That second free throw is so important because it's the difference in trying to, whether you have to defend in the open court and transition or whether you make the other team inbound the ball and you should be able to set up your defense. This is the big one. Jabari's made it. It's five-point game already, which is obviously enormous, but uh, to be able to make it six and have them inbound the ball would be a much more favorable situation for the Buffs. Colorado trying to win here for the first time since 2013. Trying to snap a string of 13 straight wins by the home team in the head-to-head -head series. And he makes them both. Walker with 24 and 11. Got to be a three now. Harmon with a hand in his face. Nails it. Davion Harmon. Takes it a three-point game. Who did you say was the first one on the floor before shoot around and the first one here around what Tad Boyle had said it was going to be Evan Batty, but they missed the free throw. He's gone back to Tristan De Silva right now. You're going to have Batty setting the screen. Guards are going to X and then Batty should be the outlet man. De Silva able to run the base, gets it into Simpson. He's trapped, passes out of it. And Evan Batty gets fouled by Harmon. Evan Batty, 71 percenter coming in. It was an 83 percenter last season for Colorado. I love KJ Simpson, Rich. He accepted the trap, did not panic. Look at him. Two guys on him. He's strong with the ball. Dribbles out, finds the open man. That's unusual poise for a freshman. Yeah, there's Playing no freshman in one of the most kid. difficult buildings in this league. Batty will have one more to make it a two-possession game. Be interesting if he should miss this, Rich, whether Colorado chooses to foul or let Oregon take a three. Coming up the foul. Throw. If he doesn't, we've got transition, 4.8 and eternity to get a shot. Plenty of time for Oregon. The question is whether Colorado will foul on a miss. And he's got it. Four-point game, 4.8 seconds left. Now the only thing you don't want to do is commit a foul. You cannot commit a foul in this situation if you're Colorado. Eric Williams to inbound it. Baseball pass toward Garrier, fumbles it. Got to have it quickly. And Colorado for the first time since 2013 comes into Matthew Knight Arena and beats the Ducks. A stunning loss for an Oregon team that blasted Washington on Sunday and got